All right, welcome to the second channel. Uh, in this one, we're just going to make some snow with geometry nodes. Um, these are the nodes if you want to take a picture so you can recreate it exactly. Um, we will be starting from scratch in this one, and this is the effect that we're going to be getting. It's basically um, an object. Uh, let's see, select the snow. It's just a plane right here, um, and everything below it should be getting snow, but only on the top. Um, and as you can see underneath like this deck, Wait a second. Underneath this deck, uh, there is no snow either. So it's only hitting the top surface and it's not going past it. So that's what we're going to be doing. So to get started, just add in a plane with shift A. I already did that, obviously. Um, and then come over to the geometry nodes workspace. Click new to add a new modifier. And in here, basically what we need to do first is scatter a bunch of points onto this plane right here. Let's just go back into solid shading right there. So we're gonna do that with a distribute points on faces like this. Um, and you can set this to something pretty high um, so that it's, it's really dense and you can see it a little better. Okay, uh, and next we need to shoot rays directly downward and um, you know, and next we need to shoot rays directly downward and see where they hit this model right here. So all of these things are in their own collection, you can see right here. And also this village model I just got from Sketchfab, it's free. Um, this is the one that I used, I'm using the Sketchfab add-on. So yeah, add everything you want there to be snow on to a collection, and then you can just drag it in from the outliner like this. So we have it right here. Um, and also make sure this is set to relative. Now this outputs instances, as you can see right here. So we need to realize that first. You can realize instances like that, or else some things are just not going to work right. Like the raycast node um, requires you to, well, it just doesn't work with instances. So let's bring the raycast node. Okay, and the target is what it's going to be hitting. So we want the rays to hit our model right here. So we can drag this into target geometry. And then we need to determine the source position, which is going to be the position of this right here, which is our plane. So uh, just to make this neater, we can duplicate this with Shift D, bring it a little closer, um, and we can get the proximity node right here. Um, and this lets us get the position. So we can plug this into the source position like that. Now what we need to do is take all of these points and reset their position to wherever the rays hit. And we can do that with the hit position. So let's get a set position node right here. Plug this into the position. And as you can see, let's select this. It's uh, all these points are already hitting, um, you know, correctly. And that's because the ray direction is pointing straight down on the Z axis like that. So if you want this to shoot at a different angle or something, you can um, update these. And so now this is going to be like more diagonal like that. Um, and these are being shot directly from the plane. If you want, you can shoot um, in the normal direction, which for our plane would be directly up by default. Um, and then when you rotate it, it will, you know, change the rotation of the uh, the it'll change the rotation of the rays also uh, if you wanted to do that you could um, capture the normal so you would just use a capture attribute up here make sure this is vector because the normal is a vector uh, and if you're ever curious about like what to set it as just make sure that these are the same color so we're capturing the normal from our plane and we can use that just take the attribute and drag it into the ray direction. So like I said, by default, these are gonna be pointing like directly up like that. But as we rotate it, you'll see that the rays will start to uh, to hit stuff. It's a little hard to see, so let's zoom in a little. As we rotate it, you'll see, you know, they're being uh, shot in a different direction based on how we rotate the plane. Uh, we don't really need to do that, but you know, you can if you want to. I'm just going to delete these with Control X. All right, next we should actually give uh, these like a real mesh because this is still points right here. Mm, let's see. Actually, before we do that, um, there is a thing that's happening. You aren't really going to be able to see it unless you look in the spreadsheet right here. But 
basically everything that like all the space right here where rays are being shot down, but they're not hitting anything. Those points aren't being deleted. So they're all just be being brought to like the same spot. Um, it would be better if if the rays don't hit anything, then the point is deleted. So we can do that with this is hit output right here. We just want to um, bring in a delete geometry node right here. So this is, you know, going to delete all of the points um, and we want to delete things that aren't hit. So we, we need the opposite of this. We can just drag it out and search for not. That'll give us the Boolean math node set to not, which is just going to invert the selection. Basically, we can drag this in. Um, and so now you can see the points on the side. If we mute this, it should be uh, quite a different number. So it's getting rid of a lot of points um, that are just, you know, not going anywhere. So if you're using a ton of points, this will speed things up. All right, now let's thicken these. We can do that with a um, point to volume, point to volume node right here. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just turning all of the points into a volume. And we can do volume to mesh, volume to mesh right here. And uh, this is what we have. So um, this is definitely too chunky, I guess, unless you like the look of that, then in that case, it's fine. I'm going to turn this to size. I think it's a little more intuitive. We can control the voxel size and the radius of, you know, the volume around each point. So um, typically you don't want to turn the radius lower than the voxel size or they'll start disappearing. The voxel size is basically like the, the size of all these faces right here. So I like to keep these proportional, the voxel size and the radius. You can do that with a value node. Um, let's set this to 0.1 and plug it into the voxel size and the radius. This is going to make uh, give you the same voxel size and radius. Uh, and it looks a little bad right here. It's kind of patchy. Um, usually, instead of making them the same, I'll make the radius like double the size. So let's uh, bring in a multiply node, a math node set to multiply, multiply this by two, plug it into the radius. Um, this looks a little better. Um, if you wanted to, you could always make this a little smaller, but be careful. If you turn this too small, it will start lagging, but set it to 0 0.05. It might look a little patchy. That's probably just because we need more points though. So you could turn this quite a bit higher, maybe like, 2000 or something like that. Um, another thing that you'll notice is how like jagged and almost like stepped these are. That's because of the voxel size, but we can also fix that. We can smooth it out. Okay, so let's uh, smooth this out now. We can do that with a set position node right here. We can take the position. So if we're setting the position to the position, then nothing's going to change. But um, what we want to do is blur the position with a blur attribute node. Plug that in. And uh, as we turn this up, it will get smoother. You can see it's smoothing out quite a bit as we do that. Uh, another way you can do that, if you don't want to do it this way, you can just mute this. You can use a, a smooth modifier right here. It's going to do a very similar thing. You just turn the repeat amount up quite a bit and it will smooth things out also. I like to do everything with geometry nodes. All right. And then um, next we can shade this smooth. Right now it's shaded flat. So shade smooth, set shade smooth. And if we want, we can add a material, which uh, I already made and I can show you how I made it. Set material, I just named it snow. So the snow material that I made is pretty simple. Um, let's go look at it. Shading tab, let's turn this on. So basically what the material is, is just a principled shader. Um, and I use a layer weight and a mix node to mix between these two colors has quite a bit of roughness, a little more than normal. I turn the specular up and the sheen up. So the specular is just going to make reflections like stronger. Um, and the sheen is going to make the outside a little brighter. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but that's what it's doing. 
most of it's with the layer weight. Um, and what that does, um, so I'm using the facing right here and the way this is set up, uh, if a face is pointing directly at you, it will be black. And if it's pointing, um, kind of like perpendicular to, to you or, you know, further away from you, it'll be more white. And that's what's controlling the mixing between these two colors. So if we wanted, we could, you know, change this quite a bit, we can make it a little more obvious. But I thought it just being subtle was kind of nice. Uh, make it slightly blue like that. Yeah, pretty simple um, setup for this. So not much to see there. Um, one more thing about this is it's not really going to work very well for animation. You can see if I drag this over here, so it's um, shooting like onto Suzanne. As we move this, uh, it will kind of update in real time like this uh, which isn't really very realistic to have that shadow casting downward if you wanted it to be more realistic you could try using um, simulation nodes uh, which i also have in this file you can get it on uh, on patreon but i have uh, simulation snow uh, let me set this up over here simulation snow um, it's not very good. I need to, I'm not going to show you how to do it in this video just cause I need to test it out quite a bit more. Um, let's go back to the beginning and we can see this play out. Basically it's going to, um, you know, emit them downward in real time and they'll kind of collect like this. It looks kind of bad. And another thing that, uh, is not good about it is if we move Suzanne, you can see that the snow will just kind of, uh, fall off like that. Um, and it doesn't really stick, which, uh, there's like no friction. There's no real gravity or velocity. So I would have to add stuff like that for it to seem good and usable at all. I wouldn't use this method, but that is a thing that if you really wanted it to work with animation and be a little more realistic then you could do it with that honestly faking it would probably be a lot easier and more optimized so so yeah that's it for this one like i said you can grab this file up on patreon um, and have a good one